We wanted to talk about our Bozeman trip because uh, part of the uh, acronym IFAF mm-hmm. could could be Idaho Falls and friends, meaning surrounding areas. In fact, we're going to talk about Wyoming coming up here in a minute because they got something interesting going on. Mm-hmm. But Bozeman is such a freaking easy drive. It is. You know, it's about the same as Salt Lake, which I feel like all of us have done without really batting an eye at it. Right, exactly. And Salt you know? Lake is all I-15. Right, which this does is... make it a lot easier. Like, there are definitely some windy bits of, yeah. you know, the Bozeman trip that I did not like very much. But... Well, and that's why you drove between Idaho Falls and West Yellowstone. That's mm-hmm. the first 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then I drove from West Yellowstone to Bozeman. That's all the curvy, that's all the fun stuff, <laughs> <Right>. I think. <laughs> yeah, I love that we have the exact opposite preferences. It yeah. makes things so much easier. It really does. <laughs> yeah. And, um, oh, and by the way, we took Carly's car, which is your yes. Sub. <laughs> yeah, my Sub, which was amazing on gas, by the way. Oh, yeah. Like we, okay, so we filled it up right before we went. By the time we got there, the needle was just barely below the F. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in West Yellowstone, <laughs> it was still above the F mm-hmm. after driving for 90 minutes. Yeah. But we hit a bird. Yeah. It hit the driver's side. I, I was going to say, I don't know if we hit the bird so much as the bird hit us. <laughs> I think it must have been on the road. And I didn't even see it because mm-hmm. I'm you know, locked on the middle of the road. Right. And in my peripheral, I see a bird hit the driver's side, side view mirror. Mm-hmm. And I, like, I didn't even have time to react. But it just, you know, we heard this thunk. Right. Anyway, it blew off the... Um, the back casing of my side mirror. So if or anyone, the front casing. The, well, I guess it depends on... Facing yeah. the front of the car. Yeah, facing the front of the car, but it's the back of the mirror, I guess. Front ca- back casing if you're looking at the side view mirror. Right, right. But anyway, uh, yeah, so if you have a total 2019 white Subaru Legacy <laughs> that you want to like get rid of the side view mirror casing on, you let me know. So Carly says... <laughs> This is how her mind works. It's amazing to watch. I've I've said it on this show before. You are an amazing problem solver. I try to be. You're. I mean, like thirty seconds later, she's like, uh, "Okay, I think when we stop in West Yellowstone, I'm going to get a little hot dog tray and some masking tape, and that ought to be a makeshift, you know, side view mirror." Right. Well, because the wind kept hitting case. the inside of the mirror and, and the like, mirror was rattling. making it rattle. <laughs> yeah. And sure enough, we went to, I mean, she MacGyvered it and like, here's a picture. <laughs> yeah. I think it cost all of like five, <laughs> like five bucks for the tape because it's a gas station, Yeah, which also the worst masking tape I've ever used in my life. <laughs> I could not get a single strip to just like pull without tearing. Yeah. It was the worst. <laughs> that, that stuff had to have been like 20 years old or something like that. But it worked. Yeah, it did what it needed to. Hence the phrase, if it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. <laughs> yeah, so was, right. I, I thought that was impressive. Yeah, it is still currently on my car. I'm not getting the yeah. new part for a few days now. Yeah, and I, it's honestly- It's so ghetto. Right, it looks so bad. Every time I see it, I just feel shame. Yeah. And I just, I almost want to put a note on it, like, just waiting for the part <laughs> so that people don't think that I live my life like this. Or just park the car in a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> Right at this point. Well, and the worst part is I can't even. So it got filthy (laughs) in Montana. I don't know what it is about that place that is just. Well, when we drove through the pine trees, there was all that yellow pollen on a breezy day. Yeah. But anyway, it's completely filthy. And I can't even take it to a car wash because the wires and stuff inside of my mirror are exposed. So I've got to fix it first, then clean it. We noticed that spring comes later in Bozeman. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you ever like miss the lilacs blooming, all you got to do is wait a couple of weeks, drive north Mm -hmm. three and a half hours. Yeah. And you were able to get pick some lilac blooms. I was, which I'm really excited for. I'm going to make some lilac lemonade out of them. But Montana is sort of a nice little um, lawless, godless place. (laughs) Which I really dug about it personally. (laughs) It's got the weed. Mm-hmm. It's got your liquor store slash casinos. Right. I mean, I guess I had forgotten about most of that. Honestly, I guess I didn't realize that gambling was legal in Montana. Yeah. Until we got there and then I saw the casinos. Because, like, I sort of assumed it was sort of like Idaho like Idaho and Idaho Falls and stuff where it's legal but only on the reservation. Right. You know? And so that's sort of what, what I was expecting. But then it's, like, everywhere. It's like in gas stations, yeah. you know, and the fact that their liquor stores stay open till 2 a.m. 
first of all, apparently they know how to party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good for them. Bozeman, Montana. Yeah. Knows how to party. Yeah. We went into one and mm-hmm. threw a couple 20s into a machine mm-hmm. and spent like an hour there slowly going broke. Right. Well, okay. Here's the and thing. And just BS and it was fun. I am the worst gambler. Mm-hmm. Okay. No matter what I do, I never win. Like every year for Christmas, my parents get us all a bunch of lottery tickets. And I, as far as I can think, am the only one who's never gotten more than the value of the lottery tickets. Like if they would have just given me the money they spent on them, I would have ended up with more. Yeah, Whereas yeah. like my brother, he's, our, I think he's won like a hundred bucks or something before, you know, same with my parents. I'm the only one who never has. Huh. And then same with when we went to gamble, there were a couple of times when you had actually doubled your money. You know? I, I, yeah, I put in a 20 and I, I got it all the way up to 70 before I played it all the way back down again. <laughs> right. With me, I, I never got above 20. Okay. Yeah, I always stayed within that $20 range. <laughs> so that was fun. And we stayed in this tiny home. It was tiny. It was. I mean, was it as big of, as an RV or maybe even a little smaller? Uh, I want to say. You know, I would say, yeah, like a like a small RV size you walk in the front door there's a living room right and then as you kind of go through do you know what a shotgun house is i don't actually They're, they have them in louisiana they're these long thin oh homes yeah, yeah. that you could probably put on the back of a trailer bed right i've seen those yeah and, mm-hmm. meaning you could and and the term shotgun comes from you could shoot a shotgun through the yeah from the front to the back right but uh yeah so Shotgun home, kind of like that, as you saw in the picture. Living room in the front, then kitchen, then bathroom, mm-hmm. and then a couple of lofts upstairs right. for sleeping. Uh huh. So, Which was kind of a wild experience in and of itself, too. It was. I've always wanted to do it. Thank you for doing it with me. Yeah, it was really fun. Uh, and I don't know if I'd do it again. I mean, okay. It's definitely not... It's not bad enough to say I would never do it again. Mm-hmm. Realistically, I would do it again. Like, it's about... I mean, square footage wise, it's a little smaller than a hotel room, but it was nice that we actually had like a kitchen and stuff. Yeah. Although we didn't have a microwave, which most hotel rooms have. And I would have liked one of those. Yeah. We didn't know. We had to pan fry our hot pockets. (laughs) Yes. Although they are really good that way. (laughs) They are. (laughs) And and, uh, it did kind of suck having to climb down a ladder in the middle of the night to pee. (laughs) There were a couple of times when I heard you going down the ladder and I was like, oh, be careful. Yeah, you know, like I'd wake up and be like, oh, be careful. <laughs> Just fall right back asleep. But yeah, because I was genuinely afraid that you were going to like fall to your death or something. I didn't. Thankfully. But the, as interesting as that all was, it was it was doable. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted really... to just exist in that size space mm-hmm. and it was pleasant. Yeah, it really wasn't bad. The coolest part to me was we had a house cat. Yes. That only came around once in the oh, three days we were there. Which I was so sad about. We even ended up like pulling a can of cat food out of my trunk that I keep there for any little strays that I find. <laughs> she yeah. wants to hug every kitty. I do. <laughs> but yeah, they texted the owner and she said, oh yeah, that's Snoop. Isn't that so funny? Here's a picture of Snoop in the wild. And then here's a picture of Snoop on my lap <laughs> because I'm a cat whisperer. Yeah, she kind of loved you. I'm like, okay, this is happening and I'm petting her and staring at my memes, mm-hmm. you know, on cat memes. Yeah. On course. my phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how you have the real thing in front of you and you're yeah. still like, I'll just go I'll just go electronic. <laughs> I'm ridiculous, I know. She's probably jealous. Right. No, but I felt a drop of water on my hand and then uh-huh. it happened a couple other times. I'm like, this cat is drooling. Yeah. But it was it was a very regulated drooling. <laughs> yeah. It was just a drop Every 60 seconds or so. Uh-huh. So I had to Google it. Yes. And I guess, totally normal. Uh, yeah. yeah. I thought, am, is she getting the rabies on me? I didn't know what was <laughs> happening, but I guess some cats get so content mm-hmm. that they drool a little bit. When I was a kid, I had a cat named uh, Ducky uh-huh. who we'd caught. Well, his real name was Lucky, but we'd call him Ducky. Um, but he would drool when you pet him. Oh, Yeah. And it, okay. was, it was really and sweet. I, and I gave he her some nice scrubbings. Like I sensed her energy, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like we've talked about this before, you always start soft. You got to start soft Mm -hmm. because nobody doesn't like soft. Yeah, right. And then, you know, if if they're like really leaning into it, throw their shoulders into it. Yeah, then you go for it. Yeah. But, I, you know, what a life being a (laughs) being an outdoor cat in Bozeman, Montana in the summer Mm -hmm. on the one hand has got to be great. On the other hand. With so much drama in the BMT, it's kind of hard being Snoop (laughs) C-A-double-T. You know, I imagine. What? 
<laughs> I'm sure it is. But you know, somehow, some way, yeah. she kept coming up with funky cat shit nearly every single day. <laughs> May I kick a litter box from a C's? Okay, I'm done. <laughs> she doesn't use a litter box. She's an outdoor cat. I'm done. But it sounds That's like funny. litter. Okay. No, you're right. I know. I know. I'm just, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs>